Okay, I don't know, I'm not sure where I should start, how I should start this video out. I'm definitely going to explain um, this bruise. If you've, if you've read the title, then you obviously know that I recently got um, filler injections in my face. If you've been with my channel for a while, then you know that I've been complaining about my temples for a very, very long time, and I've been wanting to get them filled. However, it's been very difficult for me to find somebody who injects in that area here in Corpus Christi. So I have been searching and searching. I finally found somebody. Now, I am gonna explain this bruise. This bruise is actually partially my fault. There's two reasons why it's partially my fault. So I don't want you to think that my doctor is a bad injector because he's not. He is so, so good and I really loved his technique and I'm gonna tell you about that in a minute. So I do wanna explain something because this is a very weird part <laughs> about the way that I decided to do things. So two weeks ago, I got this part of my face done. And so that bruise is actually two weeks old and it still probably has about two more weeks of healing to go. This side of my face, I got touched up yesterday. And so on this side, like here, especially on my temple, it's very tender and it um, it's very swollen and it's very lumpy. And I'm glad that I did things the way that I did because now I can talk to you about certain things. Cause like I said, this side I did two weeks ago and it's nice and smooth. It's not swollen anymore. I really love the way that it looks. So um, so anyway, and then I did get a little blob, like literally like a blob put right here. There was just a little part that I could tell had dissolved from previous filler. filler. And so he just put a little, you know, blob right there. So let me explain why I did this side of my face first. And one thing that I did love about this doctor is that he let me, you know, um, call the shots. And some doctors don't let you do that. You know, they're set in their ways about how they do things. And I've been to doctors like that before and I won't, I won't use them because I'm like, no, I know what I want. You know, I don't care what you want. I'm the one that looks at my face every day. You know, so I love that he allowed me to do this side of my face first. He said he's never, he's like, I can honestly say I've never had anybody come in and say, let's do this side of my face first. So, um, so I love that he let me do that. So the reason that I wanted to do it is because this temple was extremely more hollow than this one. Um, and I've always been very good about keeping my hair like over this temple. So you've probably never noticed in the video because this one wasn't all that bad. I mean, it was still pretty hollow, but not quite as bad as this one. And so anytime I would lean like that, then you could just really see that it was very, very concaved and it just looked awful. And especially like at night, whenever I would like wash my face and pull my hair back and wash my face and stuff like that, it would really always jump out at me. And it just, it looks so bad. It was just, I felt like a peanut head or like a light bulb head. It just looked really weird. And so I really wanted to get that temple touched up first because I also wanted to see how it turned out. If it was something that I did not like, then I wasn't gonna do this one that's always showing because I've always parted my hair this way, you know what I mean? So then on this eye, I had this area that for whatever reason, this side of my face loses volume, like natural volume, but also filler volume. It loses it um, quicker on this side of my face. And I'm not sure why, I just don't know why. Um, I feel like this has always been my bad side of my face and this has always been like my favorite side of my face. So anyway, um, it was so hollow right here that in certain lighting, it looked like I had a huge dent under my eye or it looked like, um, I think I might have a picture that I can show you, like in really bad lighting or if light was only hitting the side of my face, it would look like I had big dent under that eye or it looked like I had a black, eye. like it looked like this. It looked like I had a bruise or a black eye or something like that. And so I really wanted that area touched up. Now, the way that I got this bruise is, so first of all, there's a certain rule that you should always kind of go by before you go get filler injections. And that one is not to drink alcohol um, 24 to 48 hours prior to injections because um, alcohol thins the blood and it's you could get more inflammation, more swelling, more bleeding. Especially if you bruise, you're gonna bleed out more because the blood's thinner. And so, you know, unfortunately we were out of town literally the day before I got my injections. And so I had 
<laughs> drank alcohol for like three days in a row. And, um, and so that probably was not a good idea. And it's probably one of the reasons why I bruised as bad as I did. The second reason is this, the doctor that I use, he uses something called a cannula and cannulas are specifically designed so that you, there's less likelihood of bruising. They have a blunt tip. So they're less likely, the needle's less likely to um, nick a capillary or an artery or, you know, vein or anything like that. Well, um, he had, whenever you use a cannula, they have to put like a port in your face. So they put um, a hole basically down here, kind of low. And, and then the needle is literally, I'm not even joking. I'm not exaggerating. It's like six inches long. It's at least four inches long. It is so long. And so then they put that needle in that has like a blunt tip and then they go up and they just kind of move it around like that. So, um, he had, I'm, I'm really, really picky when I go to get filler, I will be like, let me look in the mirror. Let me look in the mirror. You know, I don't want to leave and then regret not having looked and been like, Oh, what about right here? You know? So I'm really picky about that. And, um, and I like that he, it didn't bother him at all. It usually never bothers, you know, any of the injectors that I had in the past, but everybody has always had a very difficult time getting to this one section that I always want to get. And I think it might be because this eye actually sits a little bit lower than this one. Every They can get it here all day long. I don't know why, but this side, you know, my bad side of my face, um, they can never get this one little section. So he had finished the area under my eye. And I was like, let me look in the mirror. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, you know, there, there's just this one little spot that I really want to get. Well, he just could not get it with the cannula. He couldn't get it from where he was. And he's like, I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to take off the cannula and we'll just have to go in with a needle, but I'll have to go in from this direction and I'll hold your eyeball up and everything. And, um, he said, I'll have to go in from this direction and try to get it that way. And, and I was like, um, okay. And he goes, but it's going to be without the cannula. And I was like, that's fine. That's fine. I I'm fine with that. And that's what happened because when there's no cannula, it's just a sharp needle. And since it's so vascular right there under the eye, um, apparently he nicked, uh, you know, a little capillary and literally immediately he was like, Oh, I, you're going to bruise. You're going to bruise. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And he showed it to me right away. There was already like purple and red blood just pulled up under my eye. Like it looked like an actual under eye bag, like a really puffed up one, um, with just blood underneath it. And I was like, Oh geez, you know? Um, and that's exactly, it's literally the exact thing that happened the very first time I ever got filler. Same exact thing. She's like, I'm going to have to take off. And it was the same eye, everything. I'm just really picky about that. So, and, and nobody's ever been able to do it right, but I feel like he definitely did. It's way up there now, but it's hard to see because of the bruise. So anyway, the reason that I feel like it's partially my fault is because A, um, I drank. B, uh, I definitely wanted him to get that area and he practically had to become a contortionist to try to make that happen for me. Like I said, he literally with his finger was holding up my eyeball to make sure that, um, you know, obviously that he didn't inject into my eyeball. And, um, and you know, it just happens. And that's just a risk you take. It's literally a risk you take every single time you get filler in any part of your face. And I knew that that was a risk. So for me, it's, you know, nobody wants a bruise under their eye, obviously. But the reason that I dislike it the most is not because I have to run around now in the world with a bruise on my face. I could care less about that. It's the fact that I know the assumptions that people make when they see a woman with a bruise on her eye. You know what I mean? I think the first thought is, oh my gosh, she's in an abusive, you know, marriage or something like that. I don't know why, but it would be my first thought too if I saw a woman with a black eye. I know that sounds awful, but you just automatically assume like, how'd that happen? You know, it's just so uncommon. Obviously, my age, I'm not, you know, going around getting in bar fights or anything like that, you know? I don't know. I could, and obviously, I don't know if I won or lost this fight because it's it's pretty bad. And it's so weird because I, I am a stay-at-home mom, you know, and I do YouTube videos from home. I can be as antisocial as I want, and so it doesn't bother me. For me, a bruise is a small price to pay to look good for the next two years, you know what I mean? And so, but... In the last two weeks, I swear I've had to be so social, more social than I have probably all year long. And, um, and I've had this on my face. On top of that, 
A bruise is never like a uniform color. So parts of it are black, parts of it are almost white, and then parts of it are red, pink, purple, you know, all these yellow, all these different colors. So it kind of plays tricks on your eyes, um, just like a contour does, you know? So things that are darker look like they're set further back, and then things that are lighter look like they're, you know, coming forward. So it plays a trick on your eyes and you're suddenly going, oh my gosh, is it lumpy? Does it look weird? But whenever I cake the makeup on, you know, and I could definitely cover this a lot better than I did, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, whenever I cake the makeup on, it's really smooth. I love the way that it looks. It matches my other cheek, you know what I mean? So I'm not worried about it looking bad once it heals. I think it's gonna look great once it heals. It's just, you know, it's very inconvenient right now and I'd rather not have it. Okay, so I did wanna say that you know, I'm so glad that I did things the way that I did, meaning, you know, getting this side of my face done two weeks ago and then this side yesterday. However, I will never do it that way again, but I'm glad that I did because um, I definitely took note of a lot of things and I really wanted to put it in a video so that even I could refer to it next time I get injections because I because anytime I bruise or something like this, I always go through this like, am I gonna be okay? Is it gonna look fine? You know? Okay, so because I did this side two weeks ago, I did wanna mention, if you are somebody who wants to get your temples done um, and you have hollow temples, you know, like I did, then um, you definitely need to know that when they put filler there, there's a lot of space to fill. And ironically, he thought originally, because my temples were so hollow, he thought he was gonna need one to two syringes for each um, temple. But it turns out he, we used three fourths of a syringe on this side and we used half of a syringe on this side. Now, like I said, I did this one yesterday, so it's still very tender, swollen. Um, you know, it still hasn't healed yet. And that's one of the things that I'm glad, that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I did this side first, because um, when I originally did this side, it, it turned out just like this. Like it was really, really lumpy day one. And I was like, oh no, oh no, should I have not done it? And that's the reason I did that side first, because if I didn't like it, then I was not gonna get this one done. At least I could still cover this temple with my hair like I did before, you know? And so anyway, um, so yesterday when I came home, it was very, very lumpy. And I mean, really lumpy. Like it looked like, it looked like there was a worm, a worm, and then just nothing in the middle. And I was like, oh God. But because I had just done this one two weeks before, I knew that, um, you know, the filler and the fluid in your body kind of have to find a, a balance, you know, because um, filler is hy hyaluronic acid. And so it automatically draws water to itself. And so it can really plump up really fast and it can kind of look lumpy. So it kind of has to find a balance. And then once it does, the skin kind of tightens over the top and then you get more of a smooth surface. And so I would have been panicked, you know, had I done both of them and then they were both lumpy. But because this one was lumpy too, and, and now it's smooth, I knew that that, I know that this one's gonna smooth out also. Um, another thing is when I got this one done two weeks ago, because you're filling so much space there, um, you know, we all have veins in this area. Well, I, I think we do. I'm pretty sure we probably all do. Well, I do, but you know, before my temples were so hollow that I, they weren't visible to me. I couldn't even see them. I'd have to turn to the side. But once you fill that space with all the filler, it's like the veins come to the surface. And um, when I got this one done two weeks ago, they were real visible and I was like, oh, you know, should I have not done this? Now I'm going to be seeing these protruding veins and stuff. But again, once the filler and the fluid in my body found a balance, the skin tightens over, everything just kind of smooths out. So it's not, the veins are not as obvious as look at this side. I'm not sure if you could see a giant vein right here, but that's what this side looked like two weeks ago. And so that's kind of why I'm glad I did this side first, because now I know, you know, not to worry about it, not to stress out about it, lose sleep over it. It's gonna smooth out and it's gonna look better, you know, in the next two weeks. So one thing that I really liked about this doctor is his technique. And, um, you know, in the past, I've had issue, and I know I've talked about it even on my channel, that, you know, sometimes um, it's all about filler placement. And if it's a little bit too close to the surface, then like when you smile or something like that, the filler is just going to protrude out. Well, he, like I said, used a cannula and he would take the needle and he'd go straight to the bone, like actually on this bone under here. And it was a little less comfortable for sure than just when they would just do the needle and, and put some in there and put some in there and smush it down. Um, this one, 
it takes a little, you, he's, he was really, really precise. And that's what I loved about him. And, um, like I said, it was a little bit more painful, not painful, more uncomfortable because of him putting it directly on the bone. Um, but I appreciate that because already I can tell whenever I smile, it, it's almost like it pushes everything up rather than pushing the filler up because the filler is the lowest, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. Anyway, it's so funny because, um, after whenever I was leaving and, um, you know, had a bruise, it, I'm so funny about stuff. Like I feel bad for them. Like, I'm like, I didn't want him to feel bad for having bruised me, you know, and be like, dang it, dang it. Cause I know, you know, most doctors or any injectors like, shoot, you know, I wish I wouldn't have done that. That stinks, you know? And he actually said, you know, the second time, like yesterday, whenever I went, um, back, he was like, I'm not going to lie. I almost, you know, messaged you on Instagram or called you to see how you were doing because I knew, you know, I know how bruises work and he knew it was going to get worse before it got better. And so anyway, um, and I was like, that's so funny because I almost wanted to call him or message him on Instagram just to say like, Hey, don't worry. You know, everything's going to be fine. You know, it's, it's a bruise, you know, it's going to heal itself and it's a small price to pay to look good for the next two years. You know what I mean? Y'all, it's so funny because I have had so many videos planned, um, including a filler video. However, I did not anticipate or I didn't, you know, expect to bruise like this. So, you know, originally my plan was that I was going to do this side of my face first, see if I liked it, maybe a few days later or a week later, do the other side of my face and then make a video about all of it. You know, anytime I've ever gotten filler, I've always made a video about what I wanted to address and kind of before and after pictures and stuff like that. Um, so that's what I was planning on doing with this. However, then I bruised. So I didn't want to make a video about something else with a big bruise on my face because a couple of weeks ago, it was very hard to cover. It was almost impossible. And so um, I didn't want to make a video with a bruise on my face and then not be able to explain it or try to explain it in the video that I was making because I felt like it would just take too long. And so I just didn't make a video, you know? But, which is why I'm making one now with a bruise on my face. Cause I'm like, I can't wait any longer. I have videos to make. Like I've literally been growing out my roots. My, I have so much root powder on my hair right now because my silver roots are about that long. I've been growing them out because I planned on making a video, you know, touching up my roots to show how I get my silver roots to end up being, you know, blonde like this. And, um, and I do have an old video that I could refer people to, but it's so old. And, you know, I feel like sometimes, um, you know, we should recreate our own videos, just especially for like new subscribers and stuff. Nobody wants to have to go through all your videos to see if you've, you know, made a video on a topic that they might be interested in. You know what I mean? So anyway, I have that one coming up. I have an Amazon haul coming up. I have another Venus haul. Um, Clinique sent me a huge package of, um, skincare that I've been using. And so I want to share my thoughts on the skincare. I've not communicated with Clinique at all. They just sent it to me, I guess, as a PR package. And so I wanted to share my thoughts on um, that skincare with you. What else? Oh yeah, a 50% glycolic acid peel, which is something else that I've also done on my channel. But it's one of those that I feel like I should recreate because, you know, especially for new subscribers, it's something that I do very often. And I feel like it, um, I, I get such great results out of it. And so I want to keep showing it to you. So anyway, those are just some of the videos that I have coming up. And, um, so I just wanted to get this out of the way so I wouldn't have to explain it. And even if it's still there, you know, by my next video, at least I can say, well, if you want to know what happened, just go to my last video. You know what I mean? Hopefully this will be gone in two weeks because it's really, you know, making this side of my face look really funky. So anyway, that is all I have for you today. And um, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. And um, hopefully I will see you back here next week.